Brandon's face. It's the podcast about a playlist. I'm Jonathan Beardsley. And I am Brandon May. We know we took last week off, but we are back with a huge episode. We're going to be going through tons of music on this. But before we do, we do have one bit of music news to get into. And that is the 25th anniversary of Ultra is next year. And they have announced phase one. First of all, it's just insane that Ultra is turning 25 already. And it's insane that some of like the names on the lineup now were active back then. <laughs> like Armin. I know. Any broad thoughts on the overall Phase 1 lineup before we chat about it? It is a who's who of what's hot. Yeah. You yeah. know, like like 9 by 9 has been on every Techno Tech House lineup. Is that how you pronounce that? I mean, it's 9 nines, so a lot okay. of people have abbreviated it to 9 by 9 I hate models. Nero is a fantastic addition mm -hmm. and Richie Houghton is great. But other than that, it's business as usual for Ultra. Is it notable that Richie Houghton is not doing Plastic Man? Like, I, I'm not familiar with the Dex EFX XOX moniker under the name. Is that just another alias or is this a brand new alias of his? I don't even think it's an alias. I think it's what he's calling his new show. show. Yeah, he had done what did he call it now I'm, now I'm flaking on it but he had done for the last few for the last live run where he plays with his model one that he mm -hmm. that he created i forget what he called that but i know he did one of them at coachella and he did a few you know around the world obviously he's world renowned i, I bet this is a new one so we'll see what happens there yeah some things that stood out to me i love boris getting like the phase one treatment his name should be on the list next to people like carl cox i think that's really really fucking cool carl cox we all knew he was gonna be there but it's really cool to see him on the flyer dead mouse back to back with pendulum i think that that's the must see of of all of this if i had to pick one which nobody should ever have to do that with the lineup this stacked but dead mouse back to back with it's, pendulum. it's also that's insane it's also worth noting that it is not Dead Mouse back to back with Knife Party. It is Dead Mouse back to back Pendulum. Are they bringing the yes? Band? So it is Dead Mouse retrospective set back to back with Pendulum DJ set plus live performance. I think that God. obviously so they're going to be doing separate sets and then they'll do a b2b it, is what i'm assuming it, it kind of feels like that and obviously there will be when they do ghosts and stuff rob will come out i like it's obviously going to flow like that that's going to be a must see dom dollar and john summit not at all surprised to see them on here like you said it's a it's a reflection of what's hot although i am a fan of both of them subtronics big w for the subtronics heads out there have you seen the family feud clip going around right now no, but now I will. We'll link it in the show notes. Pretty much a girl, I, the question was ED, dance music related, something like that. This girl gave EDM as her answer. It was on that. Steve Harvey asks her, like, do you have a favorite EDM song? And she's like, no, but I have a favorite EDM artist, Subtronics. And of course, everybody immediately is like, he's going to sample it. He's going to sample it. And he just did one of those like quick reaction videos of him like getting out of bed, seeing the video, running to his computer and making a quick little banger out of it. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Man. Amazing Big win for Subtronics. But yeah, this lineup is stacked. We will definitely continue to monitor it as they announce more. Most definitely. All right, man. We should get into this week's playlist because it is insane. Let's start it off with this new one from Barry Can't Swim called Still Riding. I thought it was a fun song and a really great way to kick off the playlist. What did you think? Spaceline is so fucking yeah. crisp. Dude, you know that I loved this track. I knew you would. That's why I, I rearranged these a few times before settling. And I was like, nah, this is the one. And I'm glad you agree. <laughs> Corin Cavini Solutions is the name of this track. I have never heard of this guy before, but he crushed it, man. I've always been a big fan of that intersection of EDM where melodic house and techno meet. When it's done right, like it is here, it's it's hard to beat, man. What did you think of this one? Exactly why I threw it on because it like it also has like major like late nineties trance mm -hmm. vibes. And I, I I love that, man. This is obviously great Same. stuff. A new one from Cascade and Just Us called Motivated. A bit more, 
I don't know if beats the word I'm looking for, but I'm going to use that. It's a little more that than I was expecting, given what we've heard from Cascade lately, but just goes to show you never assume. Thought the track was good, Cascade's though. Cascade's so about funny, you? dude. I, uh, obviously, I love Cascade. I've seen him a number of times, both in club and festival sets. I think that this track is a certified banger, but it is also because... I, I just think it's so funny, man. He's always like a year late to, to a genre trend, and he's really, he's really <laughs> dipping his toes, dipping his whole feet into the tech house trend, which is on the way out. Drum and bass is on the way in. Get it together, Cascade. Cascade. But I I really did like this track, man. I thought it was good. He always ends up doing whatever style he does really well. When he had released, I believe it was automatic. Yeah. It was like a year, year and a half after like Chami and Mala kind of blew up with that future house sound that was just kind of emanating across mm -hmm. all festival fields all at once, you know? And he came out and fucking crushed it with yep. with his, with that sound. So that's not really surprising to me that he's kind of dipping his toes into something else that is right there. But this is a good song, man. It's got like... It's got like uh, Dom Dalla mixed with the mid, the middle three songs of Fire and Ice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, dude. I was getting some of those vibes as well. I, you say like entering the genre, you know, a year late. I, we just call that entering your Tiesto <laughs> era. You know, <laughs> I think that he's doing that well. All right. We got a new one from Paul Oakenfold. Right on the Edge is the name of it. Dude is just timeless. This song is great. Oakenfold just it? continues to spit out trance anthems. It's like it's it's like he can't not. It's so good, man. It's yeah. so good. Always has. Always has. All right, we got not one but two new Jejotronic songs. I take it in PX. What do you uh, think of them? <laughs> number one, my notes say not one but two new Jejo tracks. The praise be, right? <laughs> These are obviously fantastic. I take it is like classic, like 2010s Boys Noise Records vibes with that kick. That's like that's like on mm -hmm. a, it. It's just boom, boom. You know, like it's so good, man. Yep. Yeah, dude, weird stuff, oh, yeah. as always, from Jejo, but it's so good. Like like you said, I Take It just has this, like, I guess the, that Boys Noise Air is a good way to describe kind of that old-school techno, like, DDR light right. type sound to it. It's like happy hardcore, but slower. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Uh, PX has this weird, like, 80s flair to it. Really, really good shit from Jejo. Uh, big fan. All right, we got a new one from Andy C. and Ferry Is Corson. Is it, Punk. <laughs> I, I don't know, dude. I was like, Ferry Corston, let me click this. And not what I was so, expecting. <laughs> Which, so what, what's I going blindly on <laughs> added this to the playlist, as I do with artists that I know I typically like, right? Sometimes that ends up being fun. Sometimes sure. it's it's not so much. But Andy C., drum and bass, Ferry Corston, electro trancey. But they're both using a pendulum melody. Is that is, the, is that pendulum that I'm hearing? I think it is. I'm pretty sure it, it is. It it's should like be. blatant <laughs> plagiarism. Obviously, it's great because it's a pendulum <laughs> fucking melody. Yes, I, th I thought that was funny, yes. man. Maybe this uh, was a mistake. Like maybe it wasn't supposed to be uploaded. I don't know how many streams it has. I think it was, man. I, I, I think it has, or else it would have been... There's official artwork for it. It's it's definitely supposed to be released. I'm glad you were equally oh, as confused by it as I it. was, though. <laughs> All right, new one from Kylie Minogue, Lights, Camera, Action. Another one off her upcoming album. Thought it was okay, like B minus, C plus, somewhere in that but realm. Kind of, kind of the same. I, 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 do, I do like it. It's not her best track, but, you know... We'll, we'll see what happens when the album comes out. Maybe it yeah. fits really well in there. We will see. We got it. two new tracks from Annie Up, Freaky Feed Me, and Outlaws. I was just saying on a recent episode that I was bummed we didn't end up getting an album from Annie Up this year. And right on cue, we not only got two new songs, we got an album announcement, and it comes out this week. It's called What Is Life. 
man, both of these songs were a little bit different than I was expecting, but kind of grew on me over the course of the week. Number What'd one, you end up your premonitions about? are great. The energy you put out into the world, just say that same shit about like Daft Punk and we'll be really good. Freaky Feed Me <laughs> is pretty expected tech house stuff from Anti Up. Outlaws, however, is like a really yeah. cool flip, man. I love the way they worked with like that samples, with that, that sample on on out. What genre are we calling it? Electro rock. Yeah. Post EDM. Post. Can't even bring myself to say post EDM trance electro. Yes. Yes. (laughs) One and only. That's that's great, man. I don't want to dwell on these ones too much because we will be talking about that album next week. Uh. All right, we got a new one from Lisa from Blackpink, Moonlit Dance, or Moonlit Floor, I should say. Loved her first two singles this year. Hate this one. That interpolation of Kiss Me is so lazy and dumb. Thumbs down. All right, bro, I'm just going to say it, it? all right? Newfound Glory did it better. Hit me. (laughs) They did. Her voice sounds great. You said that as if I was going to disagree. Well, it sounds great, but <laughs> like you said, man, that Kiss Me interpolation is just like, why, man? What are you doing? Yeah, you're like a pop rap R&B artist. This is not at all the jam what are you, you doing? should be going for. I guess versatility, but yeah, no. No, thanks. <laughs> Always yeah, keep right. them guessing, I suppose. <laughs> New one from The Weeknd and Playboy Cardi, Jesus. It's called Timeless, dude. This rollout went from bad to worse. He is 0 for 2 on the singles. I don't know if I'm already out on the album, but we are not starting off on a good foot here. What did you think of this one? Did you like it any better than the don't last? Don't count yourself out yet. Same? He is a great musician. We can't we can't do that. But I will say this, that this track is I'm not okay. going to. It is not great. It's not really even good. It's just okay. I will never in my life understand the incredible just amount of hype that Playboy Cardi gets. I just don't get it. I it, He's not good in like anything nope. that he does. I, mean, I do like one song. He, he has a song called Lean For Real, which is a pretty good song i mean it's not a good song but it's catchy and it's great background music but i just don't understand it and he clearly wanted a playboy cardi feature so he could throw the hail mary and get more people on the singles but is this being played on the radio is it even like doing doing numbers or something like that is the radio even being played on the radio 72 million plays in a couple of weeks i'd say it's doing well but that's probably all cardi fans just playing it as they sleep so yeah it's two of the most popular artists in the world right now of course it's going to have a lot of plays that does not indicate oh most definitely not but i'm glad some people are at least listening to it i guess that's a thing all right one of my songs of the week maxo cream and tyler the creator crack era the only thing i don't love about this song is how short it is it's so fucking good and to top it off we have a new maxo album coming out november 8th I could not be more excited, man. <laughs> what did you it think is of it? also one of my songs of the week, and I would just love to know yes. how this collab came about. Maybe Maxo like bought a verse, but no. Nah. Tyler and Maxo. Well, no, no. Yeah, Tyler was, on, was on. Tyler was on Maxo's oh, last right, album. Huh? Yeah, but yeah, I think they they just like each other. Both style. of them have incredibly like recognizable voices, and like you said, it's it's under two minutes. Give me like an entire collab album, please. Yeah. Yeah, this is so fucking good. I was I was thinking that too. I was like, we need to start manifesting this collab album. But Jesus, the fact that we already have two songs by them, I am very happy yep. with. From one of my songs of the week to the other one, this one is insane. It's Kochi's and Amine. It's called Nasty. It's pretty flagrant, but it's a lot of fun. The beat goes maybe too hard. The... The Kate Mine album last year was great, but I love hearing Amine rap over shit like this again. Yeah, man, loved it. What about you? I am not as, I, I don't like it as much as you, but it is incredibly fun. That is fair. It's very fun. It was a good hype up song for the week, you know? Yeah, we haven't had a uh, Akeem song in a, in about a year now, so I feel like maybe this just scratched that itch for me, which I didn't even know I had. Right. But yeah, I liked this one. All right, we got a new ASAP Ferg song with Future called Allure. I think it's produced by Mike Will Made It. 
it's fine. It's not as fun as that last Ferg track we talked about, but it's fine. What do you think of it? I find it hilarious that this is one of the first future tracks that we've talked about this year, unless we covered one of the four albums that he dropped this year. I, I, it, I, I we did not. We, I think no. we chatted, like we texted about it, but like I didn't feel like reviewing. We don't trust yeah. you. I think is what it is. Anyways, fun track. Ferg is kind of. I actually think Ferg is kind of coming into his own by not caring anymore. Yeah, yeah, and I that approach has always been what people have liked about him, but now we're getting like more of it, and I think that's cool. Hopefully, this is all heading towards something. I feel like that old ASAP crew has been just silent for too long, right. so we're due for a Agreed. new album from one of them pretty soon. All right, new one from King Trey and Mick Jenkins called Highlight. You a fan yes, of this song? Actually, I'm a giant Mick Jenkins fan, as you know. I actually left this mm -hmm. song being a very curious about King Trey's music too, man. Both of these dudes did their thing. I I agree with you on the Mick Jenkins part. He clears, but I think that I, I found the King Trey part forgettable, but he is a like skillful rapper. I just didn't really like resonate with the verse very much. But Fair. Mick Jenkins is always gonna kill it. That that's never right. a doubt. Um, all right. We got a new one from Rosalia and Ralphie Chu called Omega. There's very few Rosalia songs I do not like, and unfortunately, this is just one of them, man. Not for me. That's what about crazy, you? Bro, I really liked this song. I think her yeah? voice sounds fucking awesome. I think the I think the instrumentals are like gorgeous, man. I, I really like this one. I think instrumentally, yeah, it, it definitely touches on more of like some of your taste than mine. It her voice is always great. That's never in doubt. I don't know like if the, the collaboration really worked for me or if I thought it added much to the song. But I, I imagine that this is kind of heading somewhere. It's been a while since Moto Mommy now, so I am ready for any new Rosalia music, whether I love it or not. Um, please give me more. All right, we got a new one from Faye Webster after the first kiss. Thought this one was pretty good, well written as always, very much in line with the sound of the album she put out earlier this year. Did you this like this one? This is indeed a Faye Webster song. You can tell by the way that it is. <laughs> she sounds great, mm -hmm. and I really love the strings on this one, man. Agree. New one from The Cure. That's a new <laughs> sentence on the podcast. All right, the song's called Alone. What did you think this of it, Brandon? This is the first new Cure song since, hold on, 2008. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty what, nuts. What, man? I, I, how does Robert Smith sound so good here? It's been, it's been a long time since we've heard new music from him, and he sounds fucking great. Yeah, are, since he was on that redacted true. What song. Are yeah. you a fan of the Cure? I, w I would say older Cure. I thought... Not to not to jump ahead here, but yeah, I think Robert Smith is not the problem here. I just the song is kind of meh for me, but his voice still sounds fucking great, man. And yes, who who isn't a fan of the I, I I think if you're a fan of the cure, I think that you'll like at least parts of the song. And you did. You said you liked his voice. For I sure. Yeah. I, I my wife tells this story all the time. She saw the cure at Coachella in like two thousand and seven or eight or something like that. Like even before we got together, which was you know, basically three lifetimes ago. But apparently they mm -hmm. not only did they play after curfew and cost uh, I think it was like a thousand dollars a minute after curfew. It might even be more than that. But they played zero hits. They they refused. They only played deep cuts, and I just gotta respect Love the that. shit out of them for that. Love that. Can <laughs> that's fucking awesome. I love it when a tour is just so specified to one niche fan group of that that artist. Right. You know, they're like, "Fuck it, you're you're pl we're playing what we want to play now. We've played the hits long enough." I had some uh, friends go see Slipknot the other night. And th they they don't really know the early stuff, you know. They kind of right. know duality and on. And Slipknot opened the show just like, "Hope you don't like anything from 2000 and er or later <laughs> because we're only playing 90s." And it was uh, yeah, I one of those, that. but still a great fucking show. Yeah, it's it's Slipknot. It's all great music, and I feel like that's kind of the case with The Cure too. They've already released another new song since yep. then, since this one. It came out today, so I'm sure we'll be chatting about that yep, one next we week. It is weird to have The Cure active again. Right. I, <laughs> well, I was like, "Oh my god, The Cure? For real? I thought they were done." I know that they still tour, but like, yeah. you know, it's kind of it's one of those we things. It's like, "Yeah, he did it." You know? 
Yeah, yeah, he did it. All right, we got a new one from Karate Fall to Grace. It's a it's a slow track, but it looks like it's we're like five songs into the rollout for whatever the current project yes. is that they're doing. So it's not a surprise to get one that sounds like this soft. Album should be good though, man. I, I previewed a few of the other tracks that have come out, and I'm looking forward. As to I it. knew what that you, you would, I have neglected to throw them yeah. on the playlist. They come out on Tuesdays. So it, it I, I typically it, well singles are dropping on Tuesdays for this one. I think Numero Group, who owns the rights to their music and is releasing this one, is an old school kind of record label. They actually so gotcha. I just want to shout out Numero Group number one. If you, anybody listening or you John don't know Numero Group, go to their website, explore some of the music that they have. They they really care about specific eras of music and they really do a good job of encapsulating it they are the ones that are releasing all of the new duster stuff and re-released all of the duster stuff oh, cool. i am a much larger fan of karate than i am of duster and i actually was able to grab when they bought their catalog a couple of a couple of records from the re-releases the bed is the ocean and in place of real insight are the albums i bought this track is like a little bit more beachy and surfy i really dig it the guitar solo yeah. is sick jazzy surfy emo my man let's go i love that dude yes. shout out to Mara. all right we got a new one from amel and the sniffers big dreams probably my least favorite of the singles we've heard so far the southern rock vibe on this one just was not doing it for me or at least it did in these past two weeks but what did you think of them did you like it no, a little more it's than a me? it's a easy skip this is one of the this is one of the bands that i just throw on blindly you know and it happens to yeah. not work out the way it typically does you know what i mean my boy last few singles have been good i don't blame you album is almost here though yeah, so we'll, we'll see, see soon happens. All right, we got a new one from Blanket called Blur. Few things make fall better than some good grunge gaze. So thank you for, thank you to Blanket for that. Right, I should say. Man. I'm What'd actually surprised we one? got a new single so close to their album that we covered earlier this year, Cer Ceremonia. I, 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 yeah. I, you know I love this band. I know you do, man. What do you think, deluxe or just a random B side? No idea. Lucy? We'll see. Ah, uh, we'll see. A new one from Good Hangs, a band I don't think I'm familiar with. This song is called Do It For Dale. I like this. It's got kind of like a State Champs meets Belmont type of sound with a little bit of neck deep in there. Really good stuff. I, What'd you end up thinking of I this I love one? that uh, comparison of their musical, like clearly like musical blend, but the lyrics are very early Blink-182. I'm talking like Cheshire Cat oh, and for early, sure. and I yeah. loved it, man. This is a, I think we covered them a couple weeks ago, maybe maybe a few weeks before that, just the first, the, the, yeah, the first single we had covered, and I've been here just hearing a lot of buzz about this band, and for good reason. Obviously, it's really good. Yeah, agree. New one from Shower Beers, Static City USA. It's been a while since we've talked about shower beers on the pod, and shame on us because they just keep getting better. This is yet another banger. What do you think of it? This is same, same, but also very different from what he normally does. He's got a much more chill vibe on this one, but the gang vocals are all there. The vibes are all there. And clearly, this is the song you put on to start the pregame before you pregame. You know what I mean? Because their mute, their other music, the crucial is pre pre right? Game. Exactly. This is the this is the song you play in the car on the way to the pregame. So I, I I understood I understood the assignment. Yes, yes, you heard it here. <laughs> Good shit from Shower Beers. All right, new one from Tiny Moving Parts. Before I go, you introduced me to these guys during their last rollout, and I became a fan pretty fast. I still listen to that last album they dropped every Don't once in all. a while. I don't know if we're getting a new album yet, but this is a damn good start, man. What do you think of it? They've never missed before they released this track. Why would they start now? Yep. It's good, man. We're, it gets a little heavier, too. I, I don't know. Like, I wouldn't say it's heavy, but definitely a little heavier than their last one. Like that, too. Me, too. Um, kind of like how Real Friends like got a little, quote unquote, heavier. Um, Look, man, always a fan of Emo that. came from hardcore. We need more hardcore and emo. Bring it back, man. I agree. I agree. Uh, new one from Coheed and Cambria, Blindside Sunny. Speaking of getting a little heavier, man, Coheed bringing the screams on this one. 
I love it. Excellent work from all involved. Did they play this at that show you just went to? I do not believe that they did. Ah, this would have been a fun one live. Yes, it would have been. Oh, well, you just had to hear, hear Welcome Home. Yeah, oh, well. <laughs> Oh, well, it's a great show. Anybody who has the opportunity to go see Coheed and Cambria most definitely should. I know he's got a high register to his voice. They put on a an incredible show. This one is a lot a bit different from their regular normal music. I will say, though, that it's not the first time we've heard Claudio scream on second stage Turbine no. Blade. He does a lot of that kind of like post-hardcore blending into his progginess, so... I really like that. I hope we get a little bit more on Vaxxis 3 of this side of the heavy side of things. I wish it was a little longer, man. It's 2 minutes and 23 seconds. Yeah. I get it. I don't think that they've announced a new record yet, but I, I, I have a feeling, and it's very, it's like known within the Children of the Fence fan club of Coheed that they're working on Vaxxis 3. I'd be very surprised if this was not from Vaxxis 3. Interesting. Well, I am fucking excited for that because the last one was really, really good, man. Really love yes, that it album. Was. All right. We got one from Calathea and Vibora called Gear Hibolia. Hey, no notes job. on this one other than it's terrific, man. A lot of screamy screams. Oh, very yeah. much up my alley. <laughs> oh, yeah. What do you think of it? I heard this song. Couldn't resist throwing it on. Band I just found by combing recommendations. So I'm very stoked that I did. Calathea, Calathea is the band that I found. I don't Calathea? know who Vibora yeah. is, but whatever their contribution to this, please keep doing that. Yeah. Uh, same, same. No idea who either of these artists are, but I really liked all of it. Yep. All right, new one from Silent Vice. Tooth to Stone is the name of the song. I like this one. Really good main riff. Thought the vocals were solid. Not my usual cup of tea, but I ended up enjoying it. What do you think of it? It's funny. Yeah, I, I, I know that it's not your normal cup of tea. It is that kind of blend between, is it metal? Is it alt rock, right? Yes, you know me <laughs> this well. Is, this is the band I actually saw open for Wheel, and I think they get that Tool undertow yeah. sound mm -hmm. down like really well without without being derivative of it. You know what I mean? Yes, which that's a hard line to walk. There 100%. was another artist we reviewed, I feel like, last year where it was like a little too too tooly for me too it's a note i've had with a few proggy or alt rock metal bands over the past few years i agree this is not very derivative of that but it is kind of evokes that same mood for sure new one from better lovers at all times every single song that we've heard during this rollout has been so different from the last one i know this might be the weirdest one yet it's good i'm just excited for the album man what about you i'm excited for the record but I'm not sure that I like the softer. It's like when Beartooth put out Disgusting, and I was like, oh, bring it on. And then they put out whatever the fuck their album was next. I was like, oh, really, bro? So we'll, we'll... Sometimes you got to hit them with the riff. Bro. Sometimes you got to hit them with the riff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reminding the world about that. Oh, yes, always. All right, we got this new one. It's called Continuum from Eminence, Orbit Culture, and Nicholas Carlson. It is fucking sick, dude. Just a really great blend of styles. I really don't know how to be more verbose about it than that. Check it out if you like heavy shit. What did you think of this one? My God, man. When I saw that Nicholas from Orbit Culture was going to be on the track, I was like, yeah, let's go. The riffs on this one are fucking great. Combined with the synth work, bro, all just absolutely crushes just crushes yeah really really good dude one more single this week's from carnosis yearning of a rotten spine love that song title it's a great song too man i really love that last minute when it gets like a yep. little more growly and plucky and sporadic with the blast beats worked in it's really really good dude what do you think of this one? oh you know that i love this this was fucking brutal the the artwork for it is great carnosis is coming up so we'll see what happens i think we've got a new sing a new album on the way from you guessed it willow tip yep i'm <laughs> i should have guessed it i don't i don't know how many willow tip albums that you have waiting that we need to talk about that we haven't so many year, man it's got to be a scary amount right so now. many just so just so people know before we get into the eps i have an entire playlist of shit that we have yet to cover on our playlist on our podcast and it is close to 1900 songs as of right now 
it might not ever stop. So may, may, God, maybe, God maybe we'll us. like dump it on the last week of <laughs> of December before we get ready for for January. Yeah, a cleansing. We we need that. <laughs> All right, man. We got a few EPs to talk about this week. New deluxe tracks from Willow off that Empathogen project. I can see why these didn't make the album, but I think that they're all pretty good. Wanted with Kamasi probably being my favorite of the bunch with the horns. What do you think? Any of these three strike your fancy? Yeah, I liked all three of them, but they're way too normal to have fit on Empathogen. So I... Yes. You know, it's funny, dude. I hear... I. I... <laughs> You'll see somebody on the internet like talk about Willow or like post Willow, and they'll be like, they'll they'll be like, "Ha, huh, you listen to pop music," and it's like, "Bro, you've clearly never ever listened to Willow." <laughs> no, she has not been popping so long now, but sure. Yeah. All right, we got a new EP from Almeida called "Fuck It." The newest artist on TDE is nothing like I expected, man. I, I shouldn't assume that every artist that they sign will be rap or R&B, but I'm glad they went outside of the box. Her ability to blend alternative and indie with pop and even a little bit of light dance is incredible. Voice is beautiful. Has so many beautiful ways of showing these different types of emotions. This EP is just like a brief example of what she's capable of, and I'm excited to hear her grow on a major label. Gonna Bleach My Eyebrows is a fucking jam, dude. I, I love this project. What'd you think of it? You know, I should have looked at the record label. I didn't, and you just blew my fucking mind right now. This is TDE. That's amazing. This actually yeah, reminds me... and you can me... even hear the, like, SZA comparisons and some of the writing on those early tracks. Oh, certainly, man. Yeah, this actually reminds me of a less weird Willow, which is kind of nice. She's got a killer voice. I love how yep. it kind of takes the front and center in the mix. The production is crisp, and I honestly think that the EP suffers a little bit from that. A little more distortion on the guitars and some fuzz on the ba bass would really make this thing pop. Yeah, I think that this is still has kind of like one foot in the like pop realm. And maybe that's always going to be a part of her sound. But I do think that she is very much capable of fully embracing alternative and indie and succeeding at it. Because there is plenty of evidence of that on here. I was, man, I was blown away by this the first time I listened to it. I was like, no fucking way, TDE, sign this girl, dude. This is great. This is what we need. We need labels to be more progressive with the, not just the releases, but with the artists and their future plans. This is really, really good. For sure. Totally agree. A uh, few electronic EPs to talk about this week. First up, Electric Rescue, Jacking Jack EP. Uh, pun intended, this whole thing is absolutely electric, dude. I loved it. What did you think about it? Another absolute banger release from Electric Rescue. This one came out on yes. Virgo, which is a Berlin-based techno and IDM label. Big fan of this one. So the bass lines are crunchy, and you just know they sound good in a building made of nothing but concrete. Don't they all? So with this next one, which is by Fernando Garrido, receive a EP. This is a banger, dude. I love how crackly it is. What did you think of this one? So this was released on Amsterdam Techno Records. That's the label name. Absolutely yes. named. We open with the title track from the EP, and it is just madness from there man it's got this like rolling and growling bass line the kicks kind of take a back seat on this opening track and then he does the exact opposite on the next track and lets the kick do most of the work aside from his little yes. modular synth stabs yeah man this is just a master class in techno right now while not conforming to any of the particular flavor of the week flavors yes. of the week this is most definitely proper techno deserves to be deserves to be loved i heard it i heard the first two tracks and i was like dear fucking god man <laughs> anytime you label something proper techno you know it's good right that's it man that's it right there <laughs> all right we got this new one from memory derelict the visitations ep these are a few remixes of tracks from his last few projects i like how they each cover a different part of his sound that serpent church remix has those like hard dance music vibes from his last project and permanence has sort of like an ethereal glitchiness to it that I really like. And Brothers and Sisters is probably the most ambient of the bunch. Best enjoyed in headphones for sure. But I liked all three of these, man. What about you? 
Yeah, I liked all three of these. I need to say who he reminds me of with these productions, and it's a What's massive that? compliment. He reminds me of Matt Lange. He's kind of a chameleon in that he can kind of like, like you said, hard dance, ambient, or atmospheric, ethereal, and then ambient, and have it all kind of really go together. I really enjoy yeah. this, bro. Yeah, I think the key to that is really just going into each project or each song really just with a completely open mind and letting whatever you come up with guide it it worked here for sure yeah i i know how difficult it is to like even finish a song so it's it's really cool to hear entire projects and then remixes or remasters of songs like it's really cool man don't let people know we're working on songs, Brandon. That's supposed to be a secret. Brandon's Face Records is not off the ground yet. We can't talk about how hard it is to finish songs yet. You can't let them know that it's hard to finish songs because Brandon's Face Records is not off the ground yet, Brandon. So we will talk about that. It's, it's really hard, though, bro. It is really fucking hard. Respect to those artists, man. All right. Are you ready to talk about the albums? I we got am. a lot, so let's get into it, starting with this new one from Tommy Richmond, Coyote. When Million Dollar Baby dropped earlier this year, became an instant hit. He was met with a lot of hate. Accusations of him being an industry plant were flying around. That immediate success is always going to draw negativity and doubters. I think he did a good job staying above it. I was on board, at least. I'm a fan of Million Dollar Baby and the follow-up single, Devil is a Lie, and I never really thought he was in plant. We we heard him on that last Brent Fias project last year. We knew he'd have a voice that we'd be hearing again at some point. I don't think either of us expected him to put out like one of the biggest songs of the year, though. Following Devil is a Lie, we started to get the album singles, which is a little odd. I assumed Million Dollar Baby and Devil is a Lie would both be on the album. And I think it's a shame that they're not. The next two singles we got were Thought You Were The One and Whitney, both of which were like kind of fine to boring, not the type of song you really want to be leading or roll out with. I'm not sure if he was trying to prove a point by not putting the biggest hit on the album, but it feels like a missed opportunity. Beyond the songs that aren't on the album and the singles that we heard, there just is not much on here I enjoyed or that stuck with me in any meaningful way between like a four and a five for me my standout is tennessee which is actually a pretty fun posse cut what did you end up thinking of this project so going into this one john i i really wasn't entirely sure what to expect from the singles and the features of his that we've covered i i, I knew i liked his voice mm -hmm. right what I didn't know was that this dude has a great ear for catchy synth work. His voice is great on the whole thing. I, I got to respect the dude for not throwing his most popular song, so, uh, songs on here, right? Million Dollar Baby was good. We talked about it, I think, like way earlier in the year, right? Yeah, I think that one dropped like pre-Coachella, somewhere around there. Yeah. Y you know, I they... they those tracks didn't really fit the vision of this album, I'm assuming, right? And this whole album is kind of like a blanket of synths and clean bass lines with Tommy's extremely filtered vocals kind of overlaying on top. I can totally see how this wouldn't be everyone's cup of tea. It's mine for the most part, right? A couple of things I love about this album. The production isn't necessarily crisp and overdone. For a pop album from a dude with a mega hit, he probably could afford to have this mixed exactly the way he wants, which I'm assuming he did. I love the majority of the bass lines. There's some really funky stuff on here. A couple of things I really didn't like, though, is the lyrical content on this whole thing is just fucking awful. He sings well, but when we have terrible lyrics, it takes me out of it almost every yep. time. I actually liked this more than I didn't, so I'm going to give it a five and a half six out of ten i liked Whitney. Yeah, that's fair man yeah it's not for me we got a new one from twee this one very much is for me her new album wings hit us this last week she has not missed yet this is just another great pop r&b album full of memorable hooks infectious melodies the beats are really fun they have a nice bounce to them she experiments slightly with some different styles i felt like d8 was something new for her Hair Down was a bop when it dropped, still is. Nothing much more to say about it than that, really, man. It's just a really good album between a 7 and an 8 for me. My standout is What You Gotta Say featuring Blast, a really, really good rap R&B track. What did you think of this album? 
You know, I actually don't have too much to say about this record that I didn't say about her previous one. This is extremely good pop RB, and I love that it's done with only the one feature. She's the star of the show. I hope it helps catapult her to the forefront of the genre. I think ever since I first heard her, I think she's deserved it. Her voice is great. The composition of these tracks are great. And the way the album is sequenced is really good. Kind of laying you on a cloud with that final track. I especially like, and I want to shout out whoever programmed or played the drums on this record. My God, you did it right. It's done extremely well. Cloud 11 or What You Gotta Say with Blast are going to be my standouts. It's an easy seven. Easy seven. Glad you enjoyed it as well. What about this new Caribou album, Honey? I've really enjoyed it, but I imagine you've been enjoying it quite a bit. So as is tradition from Dan Snaith, we have a house record that is a snapshot in time of the house scene while still being so incredibly identifiably caribou. This dude has to be one of the hardest working DJs and producers right now. He's been on tour with his Daphne DJ sets, did the four hour set at Coachella this April. He's been finishing this album and I have no doubt that he'll very soon embark on a tour with caribou and the band that comes with caribou for this album. It's fun. It's bouncy. It's pure house music with the caribou twist melodies as infectious as uh, every as ever. And a few tracks on the back half of the album that seem like they would be a lot of fun to play with the band. I would be surprised if he isn't at Coachella this year, Same. given his history yeah. with the festival and how he could absolutely tear the fucking outdoor theater down at sunset all in all john this album like all of his records hit a pretty specific spot for me that spot being when i need some bouncy music to get me through the day i'm gonna throw on some caribou seven out of ten campfire or climbing are my standouts on this one couldn't pick dude yeah man you said it dude i I mean we knew this was gonna be great just based on the singles it's glad I'm glad that it did not disappoint, man. Honey is one of my favorite Caribou songs to date. It was a great start to the rollout. The other singles were just as good. There's a reason it's also the name of the album, though, in terms of that lead track. That's just a fucking banger. That one alone is capable of tearing down a stage. But this whole thing is so good, dude. It has a consistent sound without getting stale. It manages to land the plane every time it starts going in a new direction. It's hard to fully appreciate with it coming out so close to other great dance projects like Jamie XX and Floating Points, but this will definitely be considered one of the better dance albums of the year whenever we look back at this time in music. It's in that seven to eight range, man. My standout is Honey. All right. There it is. We got a new one from Lane 8 called Childish. A little bit different for him. What did you think of this one? So I'm just going to start off this review and kind of be honest here. This album may be a little bit hard for me to talk about. It actually became pretty important to me in my life over the last couple of weeks. Unfortunately, my cat passed this week and this album was kind of the soundtrack to everything involved with that. For that reason, it holds a very special place in my heart. Lane 8 has consistently put out luscious synth melodies and I think he may have outdid himself on this one, John. Starting from the building of Childish all the way through to Quiet Rush with Sultan and Shepard, lush and serene melodic house music. The way he builds everything up from something that sounds just so simple into such gorgeous music is something I've always loved from him. The vocalist he chose to work with and the clearly structured placement all work really, really well here, man. The deep with Art School Girlfriend is beautiful and driving, while the choice with Arctic Lake, who he's worked with more than a few times, twice on this album, actually, yeah. has this like down pitched synth line that just invokes feeling of serenity and calm, man. The building of that synth line, the softness of the kick drums he uses is just so good. That classic Moog synth he uses on You with Casablanca is so nice. I loved everything about this album, man. And I would love to, and, and I just love to hear how he's got, I would love to hear if he's gotten any new synths because it sounds like he has. And I would love, Lane 8, come on the podcast, talk about <laughs> your gear. I will never forget hearing this day, de- his debut EP called little by little. And just knowing that this dude was about to blow up. I am so glad that he has, I'm so glad that this never happened is taken off in a way that he is 
getting pretty recognizable now. And if anybody has a copy on vinyl of Little by Little that they would like to sell me for under $180, please let <laughs> me luck. know. This is a 9 out of 10 album for me. Easy. Probably biased due to how important it was to me. But that doesn't really matter because it's fucking gorgeous. My standout is you with Casablanca. What did you think about this one? A little different than you. First of all, rest in peace, Reptar. We will all miss you. This episode and every episode goes out to any of our pets, man. We love you guys more than anything. Agreed. So I had a a slightly more sobering take on the album than you, and I hope that that doesn't hurt you at all. But my honest take on this one is one overall, I liked it. I feel like mine is more a case of expectation. Like, obviously, I'm happy anytime the daddy of this never happened returns home. And... I really, really was interested when he kind of posted the artwork for this one and the idea behind it. And Mark announced it as, quote unquote, a mark of a creative rebirth for Daniel Goldstein. And I I just don't think that that is necessarily true. Like you said, maybe some new synths and stuff. But this doesn't sound too different than any other Lane 8 project to me. Maybe I'm missing some nuance there, but this still feels like just a Lane 8 album. It's a lot of the same sounds and chords and tones we've heard before, and I like all of those things. I think he's one of the best at using them in the way he does, but the launch of this record had me thinking it'd be a little bit different than it was, so my expectations were just a little skewed. Not mad at all that we just got another Lane 8 album that sounds like Lane 8 to me. That's like pizza, dude. I'm going to happily accept that whenever the fuck it gets here. Like pizza. But, but we've heard we've heard a lot of this sound from him over the years. It's not wearing on me. I was just hoping he would add some more new wrinkles in than we got. Maybe there's some new things on here I missed the first couple times through. But the couple of listens I've given it, I've enjoyed. I still just... I, I want to know what else he can do. It's it's a seven for me. My standout is the same as yours, you with Casablanca. That one just hits right away. It's a it's great an, track. It's an bro. undeniably good song on this album, man. But for I, sure. I don't think our scores or, or takes on this album are any different removed from emotion. I think you've always just been a slightly bigger Lane 8 fan than me. That's fair. Yeah, I think I think I always have been. I think I, th- I think your review is totally fair. Well, thank man. you, man. It it's always great when you can like. We talk about music as if it's just this like here's a piece of art, consume it, let us know what you think. But it, it's beautiful when an album can form a connection to a moment, happy or sad in your life. So it's it's great that Lane Eight got yet another connection to you. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. All right, let's talk about this Sophie project, self-titled. Given that it's a posthumous release, I will not be giving it a score. I'm not even going to really be saying things I don't like about it because I don't think it's fair to judge a piece of art that the artist attached does not know was released. Beyond my moral objections to these types of releases, though, I do think it's cool to give the fans something new all these years later to bring them closer to the artist they love one more time and to act as a piece of closure. There's a lot of versatility when it comes to the production styles on display throughout this album, as well as the overall sound. But despite that versatility of sound, and despite it being a release composed of old songs she was working on, it it's cohesive, but it, it's so bland compared to how an old Sophie project would be to me. And I think that's just where the confusion comes in, because you're like is this the album she would have released? And maybe she was just going to release kind of a dud of an album. Are these songs complete? Would she have cut songs? I hate all of those questions when it comes to a release like this, but I do think as far as the people that put this project together in whatever shape it was in, did a decent job at keeping it cohesive. It does flow together pretty smoothly for a posthumous release of its kind. Some of my favorites on here include that three track run with BC kingdom, Live in My Truth being my favorite of those three. My Forever is probably like the best just straight up pop song on here. Undeniably well written and catchy. But my standout is Do You Want to Be Alive? I think that one just, I love the ebbs and flows of it more than anything. So yeah, man, that's my take on this album. What did you end up thinking of this one? Did you like it or did it just kind of meh for you? Well... Since it's a posthumous release and it's impossible to answer questions, I wrote an entire review. I don't think I'm going to read it. 
Well, you you can give me your thoughts in <laughs> in any way, shape, or form you would like. I'm just gonna say I did not like it. Yeah, that's fair, man. And that 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 is not an uncommon response to this album that I've been seeing going around. It, it's a weird release, man. It it's out. I now. think if you're gonna honor. I think if you're going to honor somebody with a release of music that you know that they liked and were working on and perfecting it, why wouldn't we honor them the right way? Fair. Those are my thoughts on posthumous releases in general. Yeah, let's leave it there. We got a new album from The Smile, Cutouts. So, my man, <laughs> don't even start giggling. I hate that. That scares me. I'm just joking. It, it's going to take me a while to fully process my thoughts and feelings on this one. I already know that I love it. I actually think it's their best to date. I know I said that about their last album, which came out, checks notes, 10 months ago, but... They're only three albums into their discography. I really do believe they're getting better every time. I wasn't expecting that, though, because I figured the album's called Cutouts coming out so soon after the last one. I just thought it was going to be songs that didn't make the last album. Some of them might be, but I think that they all work really well together. Zero Sum, Eyes, Eyes and Mouth, The Slip, No Words are all among my favorites. But I think the whole thing's great, man. It's it's another like eight to nine for me. I think Zero Sum is not only the best song in the album, but maybe my favorite song that they've put out so far. I know you typically like the zippier side of their sound and less of the like Tom in love with the sound of his own voice side of their sound. And I thought that this album might have been their zippiest to date. So with that in mind, did you enjoy it any more or less than their last projects? Don't put thoughts in my mouth. <laughs> uh, I know that you love it when I talk shit when I talk shit about Tom Yonk, and I will forever continue to do so always. But you know what's funny, John? I really like experimental genre blending music that sounds like it shouldn't work, but ends up working while being technical and incorporating multiple instruments that seem like they shouldn't work for the style of music being made. That's what this is. Why does it work so well with other artists for me, yet comes off as pretentious when the smile does it? Is it my bias against the online music nerd community constantly jacking yes. Radiohead off? Is it the fact that Tom has a bad voice? No. I don't know what it is, but it does come off as a bit too much and a bit pretentious to me. All right. So I wrote all of that down after my very first listen, and I planned on not saying it, but I decided to here so i'm going to give you my actual review here i came back to this album knowing that i had biases in place and i needed to give it an unbiased listen if not for me for you John. thank you so i have to say is great music like i said on their last album like i've said on all of the times we've talked about radiohead when i where i was basically forced to be honest about yes. things i look man foreign spies is a little much it's a little too overindulgent but tracks like instant psalm really do it for me because they're not overindulgent and they're all in the pocket while the songwriting is really good yeah. the strings and the flutes on this track are really good i'd love to see this live with like an orchestra that would go extremely hard in the softest way possible <laughs> Like I said, when Zero Sum dropped, I enjoy this style when they do it. The bass is just so good. So mad. Don't get, don't get me started is just so fucking weird, John. If I made any music like this, like if I sat down, opened up FL Studio and made this, I would absolutely hate it and be embarrassed <laughs> to release it. It is, everything is off key. Nothing really does anything until like the last 15 seconds of the track. You just don't get it. I understand. I understand shit like this as an art piece, but at least make it all come together at some point, man. Tiptoe is lush and absolutely gorgeous. The slip is really good. I especially enjoyed the way the bass line just kind of meanders. Is he using a synth for the bass line here? And the drumming on this track is fantastic. Look, man, the album is good. There are some choices that had me scratching my head and like actively wanting me to like turn it off. But I guess that's where I lie with the smile. I think I'm okay with the fact that they're going to make choices that maybe yeah. I don't like. It's going to lower my score, but that doesn't really mean anything to anybody ever. It's a seven for me. My standout is The Slip or Zero Sum. Either of those songs are great. I'm going to call that a win. I'm going to call that a win. Yeah, well, 
common brand in W. <laughs> we'll leave that there. All right. Mostly because I just want to move on and talk about Galant. Big surprise. So Big surprise. Galant's here. new album, Zinc, is out. It has been five years since his last full-length album. And despite an EP and a collab album and multiple features, us Galant fans have been starving. The drought is finally over. Getting an album this beautiful as his comeback is almost overwhelming for me. In the short time we've known him as an artist, he's gone from major label Grammy nominee to genre bending indie powerhouse. That's not a, men- a transition many artists make, let alone thrive during. As a fan of his music, I don't think that it's ever once dipped in quality, despite what's going on. Every release hits. They're all starting to hit differently, but they all hit. No matter what genre or style he chooses, his voice and his instincts always come up with something amazing. We saw a lot of that on the singles, Cold Star, Fly on the Wall, Crimes of Compassion, but that was just the tip of the iceberg, man. The first two tracks are great, but Siberia is really where I really started to sink my teeth into this album. First track, I had to run back immediately. Love that main melody, that like chanting thing he's doing with his voice. Love the way those keys come in more as it goes along. That song going back to back with Monorail just cemented it as a classic pretty much immediately. From there, we move into the singles. I know that he has said a lot about being more of an Indian or alternative artist on this album but the truth is that it's all just galant music and i would argue centigrade featuring now is probably on the r&b side of that sound more than anything i think it's a great duet their voices work really well together that like echoing bell thing at the end is so fucking good uh later on in the album we get one of his best songs to date with Adams, which feels the most ology adjacent on the album to me, or maybe just ology adjacent song he's released since that album, man, just those, the, the choir vocals in there, all the layering he's doing the guitar work. He closes this one with the equally insane lucid, which will probably end up becoming my favorite on the album over time the way his voice plays off the guitar once they both go to 11 at the end is just phenomenal man the the whole album is phenomenal it's it's in that rarefied 9 to 10 range for me big surprise i stand out if i have to pick one is crimes of compassion but if i'm going off the newer songs it's siberia what did you end up thinking of this one man man this dude's number one i'm sorry you ha- you just reviewed this album very well. So thank you for your hey, review, you. John, because that it was awesome. This dude's voice is insane, yeah. John. His falsetto was wild in 2019 when you had first shown me him, but his voice has really leveled out since. He has a complete range that he's able to pull from, and he absolutely crushes every vocal performance on this record without a doubt. How is this man not more popular? The instrumentation and production on this album are both incredible you pair his voice and the musicality and the amazing songwriting and you have an incredible album i love the guitar work i love the bass lines his musicality here is insane man the details in the thing make it incredibly cohesive this this whole album is great i can't say anything you didn't say so i'm not going to this may be his second best record after ology for sure bro it's an easy nine out of 10 for me and my standouts are either Siberia or crimes of compassion. Yes. Those, those are the two, if you really have to pick, (laughs) but but that's if you're going kind of on a singles thing. Yeah, man, I think that he crushed it. I, he said a lot in the buildup of this is like, he had the same nerves releasing this one or had a lot of the same butterflies about it that he had around releasing ology. And I can hear why, It sounds nothing like Ology for the most part. I think his new way of singing with his chest voice and using his falsetto is like the secret weapon instead of vice versa makes all of this feel way more personal. Every line sounds like he's telling you it, but instead of trying to sing it in a way that's impressing you, he does that plenty on here too, but... I, I love every decision he made with this album. One of it's in my top ten, probably my top five for sure of the year. Great, great album. 
I'm sure it is. I knew it was as soon as I hit the second track. I was like, yep, <laughs> yep John's gone. <laughs> yep, that that's the one. <laughs> oh, man. I'm glad you loved it too, man. What about this new? I really, really did. What about this new Drugs album, Until God Shows, their third self-titled album? What'd you think of it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's a semi it's a post self Look, man, <laughs> Craig Owens and the rest of this band just gets it, man. The energy in this release is ne- is in this release is next level. As is the rest of their discography, bro. They have consistently put out post hardcore that has all of the elements that I and presumably a lot of other people in the world want to hear from a post hardcore band. They've got two steps. They've got energy. They've got soaring cleans. They've got some great screamy, screamy moments. Although I do wish that there were a little bit more screamy, sure. screamies on this one. They've got breakdowns. They've got clean production, but it's not too clean. It's not crisp clean. I, I, there isn't much else to say about this, man. It is pure MySpace core done in 2024 with one of the best vocalists in yep. the business and has been for 20 years. It's a fantastic record again from the dudes who just will keep redoing the same album title, hopefully for decades. <laughs> it's an eight. My standout is head case, but you already, I, I, I had a feeling. Yeah, dude, with it being a, a Craig Owens involved album, the floor was always pretty high with it. He's incapable of sounding bad. Everything he sings sounds like he was made to sing it. I'm a fan of their previous two albums. Like you, I'm equally a fan of this. At its worst, you could say it's semi-formulaic metalcore, but if you're a fan of this or this band or this type of music at all, you're going to find something to enjoy on this album, man. I found plenty. Singles are great. It Follows, Malice, and Hunger Pangs are all bangers. New tracks are pretty rad as well, man. Like you said, Headcase fucking rips. The Sweet Misery is really good, and like most of the songs on here has a nice little breakdown in it, man. Steel starts off with one of those like fist clenching riffs that makes you kind of stop and say, hell yeah, every time it comes on. Didn't love all of it, though. I'm not a big fan of that almost rap like style he does at the start of Crawl From Under. But even that doesn't sound bad. It's just not my thing. But yeah, man, none of that really took away from the overall experience. It's a light eight for me. Hunger Pangs is my standout. Such a good song. So I actually introduced somebody to drugs today. Wow, uh, man. I have a <laughs> bit of brag. I, I, I have, I know, right? I have a, a coworker who attending when we were young and he is not overly familiar with the band. So he found a playlist and he's been telling me about mm-hmm. it. He was like, bro, this band Chiodos is crazy. And I was like, oh, <laughs> the kids are finding <laughs> Chiodos. Yeah. I was like, you should check out drugs, man. He was like, what? he was like, what do you mean? I was like, well, number one, I just go to destroy, rebuild until God shows Spotify. And I, I watched him do it. I was like, listen to all of their music and uh, you're welcome. <laughs> and he came back a couple about an hour and a half later and was like, yep. Yep. <laughs> That's Did it. he know right away. He was like, it's the Chiodos guy. <laughs> Yeah, 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 for Good. sure. And then I told them, and then I told them, you're going to go see Silverstein play Discovering the Waterfront. Yeah. Go do that and do not miss that. Yeah. Most definitely do not miss that. Good shit, man. Love that. Always got to evangelize right. for our scene bands that we grew up. They got rent to pay. We got a new album from Jug- Drug Church called Prude. What'd you think of it? All right. Goodbye, Brat Summer. Hello, Prude Autumn. Drug Church has been on my radar for radar for a year or so now. We covered hygiene when it came out, and I bought a few of the records. Suffice it to say, I am becoming a pretty large fan of their music. This album is no exception, man. The music is more of the same, which is exactly what I wanted from them. And it's just toned down modern punk with some of the best songwriting in the genre right now, man. Tracks like Business Ethics stand out because of the storytelling amid some fantastic music. That bass line is wicked. Yankee Trails is probably the best song on the album, but they're all really good, man. It's another W for Drug Church, and I'm sure we'll get more W's from them. It is a 7 to 8 out of 10 for me. Standout is Yankee Trails. What'd you think? I really liked it, dude. I really liked Hygiene, and I... 
I think that this one needs a little more time to grow on me. I like how aggressive it is up front. Writing still seems just as sharp. It's versatile in how it's able to like approach different versions of punk music in their own unique way. I'm a fan of their like more pop punk leaning stuff like that lead riff on my Opic reminded me of old lit, which, you know, I'm a huge fan of the album cuts are pretty solid yep. too, man. Mad care is a great opener business ethics, probably my second favorite on the album. Like you said, dude, it's another solid album from the guys at drugs. Easy seven for me. My standout is my Opic. Nice. Yeah, that's a great song. Great single. Yes. All right. We got a lot of metal to talk about. So let's start with this. Oh let's start with the Black Dahlia Murder album, Servitude. It, it's weird hearing a Black Dahlia album without Trevor on vocals, but I, I think Ryan did a pretty solid job. It, it's not Trevor, but it's not a step down either. It still sounds like Black Dahlia to me. And that was kind of biggest worry i had going into this one musically it's really nothing new and i don't mean that in a bad way it's it's exactly the type of metal i expect from them structurally it falls in line with the rest of their discography kind of right around that 10 song 30 minute mark flows very well part of me wishes they mixed it up a little more than they did on this but it's just nice to hear them regain their footing in the wake of such a big loss, man, it's it's a light seven for me. My standout is, oh, it's either Panic Hysteric or the the title track, Servitude. Both of those are, are fucking bangers. What do you think of this album? All right. So <clears throat> number one, R.I.P. Trevor Sternout. This is the first release from the band without him on lead vocals. The ethos of the band lives on, though, and I'm sure that's what he would have wanted. Right. Like I said, the spirit of the band lives on, and that is apparent all throughout this album. The guitar work is technical as hell. In fact, it's more technical than some other previous releases, and it's also a little less melodic, but I bet that that's a symptom of it being a little bit more technical. The drums are tuned very well. Alan has also upped his technical prowess here. Tracks like Panic Hysteria and Asserting Dominion show just how well this dude can bang on things with sticks. He instantly switches up as, as switches up as if a change in tempo didn't even happen. He even does some fantastic fills and other change-ups during a lot of the solos. I love the riffs on this thing. Their fret pulls and inventive technicality are it's some of their best here, in my opinion. Brian has always done backing vocals for this band, and he takes the lead vocals role pretty, pretty seriously here. The vocals are the only, o only thing that like I feel like it fits, but it doesn't. I, I, after each twist and turn of the album, I was like expecting Trevor's signature lows to come in. Like you said, the music just fits so well for Black Dahlia Murder. It's hard to not expect the vocals that you have come to know, right? Perhaps this is the reason why bands like Suicide Silence end up like changing their sound quite a bit after losing a vocalist. It's hard to have so much of the spirit of a band and leave something to be desired like that, you know? Yeah. This isn't to say that Brian didn't do the band justice because quite to the contrary, the dude shows off some pretty great range and without even trying to emulate treasure, Trevor still hits some of those soaring highs that are expected out of a Black Dahlia murder record. The album rips for sure. It is probably about a seven for me. The transcosmic blueprint is going to be my standout. Yeah, the trust transcosmic blueprint. I was like that the whole album just like felt very like would any of this be named the same stuff if it was like the old Black Dahlia to me? Uh, everything feels a little right. bit different about it. Even like the namings of the songs like that. It was very odd. <laughs> And I think that it is right. Like, so I don't know when you came into the black Dahlia murders zeitgeist, if you will, but I came in, I believe it was around miasma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was around miasma and my God, man, like you go back to an album like miasma and you're like, Oh my God, 
like this, this band is going somewhere and uh, you know what's great dude is you can you can go back and you can watch cannibal corpse has a documentary on youtube called centuries of torment i'll link it up yeah. in the show notes here and trevor is all over this as not only the vocalist of the black dahlia murder but they like catch him coming out of shows like he was a member of the death metal scene and it's hard to it, those are hard shoes to fill and we have to give Brian props for a, even attempting at that. And without Trevor's monumental impact on melodic death metal or death metal as a whole, this album would be revered as a fantastic metal, melodic death metal record. And I think we need to, I think everybody needs to kind of take that into account. Yeah, you know I, what I mean, I agree. All right. We got a new one from undeath more insane. You threw this one on here. Did you like it more than that last one of theirs we talked about? Look, man, I, I threw this on because it's undeath. They're getting a lot of plays, right? So we should probably talk about it. I love the album cover on this one. I just wanted to open with that. This is a pretty bare. This is a pretty bare bones run of the mill. Cannibal corpse meets morbid angel death metal. They are not reinventing any wheels here. And like I said, in my review of their last album, I don't really think that's a bad thing. It is just some good old fashioned death metal. And I love an album like that. Classic old school sound, great riffs, good vocals, tremolo picking fret pulls, can't forget those blast beats and some double bass grooves thrown in here and there. I don't really have too much to say about this one, man. It is an undeath album. And I'm just a little surprised to see how well this band is received. But overall, I'm happy that they are where they're at in the music, in this like niche corner of metal music. It's it's a six to seven for me. Uh, Wailing Cadavers is probably my standout. I know you like this band. What'd you I, think? I agree with you. And I actually really don't have much more to say about it than that. I, we kind of like chuckle about the pitchfork article, but that was more of us chuckling about just like what pitchfork views as the, the world yeah. of metal and kind of like our view of, of their take on metal. Undeath has always been kind of an innocent bystander in that. I, I think that they're a good metal band, and I think that they've been incredibly consistent in the time that we've been covering them. I think that this album is yet another good album. Like, overall, I don't think it's bad. I think that they do everything on it pretty well. I, I maybe, yeah, like, wish something stood out more about it. But like you said, man, it's doing what you expect it to, and it's doing it well. I... I enjoyed it more than I did. And it's also in that six to seven range for me. I think my standouts brandish the blade though. Really good track there. An album I'm a huge fucking fan of though, is this new blood incantation album. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> elsewhere. This is both nothing I expected and everything I needed, dude. Stargate one is a great with like this random fucking jam session part in the middle of it. Love that. Stargate 2 is essentially a four-minute buildup to a breakdown. Also love that. Three, probably the most dynamic and brutal of that trio. Love that little scream it opens with. So good. The message one, just as chaotic, but starts off with like this really punchy groove. It's almost melodic. Eventually descends into the usual chaos, though. The message two is is the lighters in the sky song of the album. Not my favorite, not because it's the slow song. It just didn't really land for me as much as the others, but they make up for it by capping it off with an 11 plus minute musical anarchy fest that touches on everything that they do throughout the album. This one is great, man. Strong eight for me. Stargate three is my standout. What about you? All righty, man. Well, the crossover appeal for this band will always vex me a little bit. The people who genuinely dislike death metal or just like don't pay attention to death metal really like this band. And I am so happy that that's happening because I would love extreme metal to hit the mainstream. I, I look, man, I love this album, obviously, right? It's got everything I like in a death metal record, right? Blast beats, fantastic vocals, some really great riffs. And of course the bass lines are top notch. It's got everything I like in a prog rock record, right? 
sultry guitar solos, tracks that take their time and morph into something it wasn't just 10 seconds ago, only to bring it all back after a few minutes of noodling. Mm -hmm. I listen to a lot of Prague. And while that niche is in a really good place right now, I think that this album is really something that's going to make bands be a little bit more inventive. Clearly, this album is topping people's lists this year. I would be incredibly surprised if it doesn't crack at least a few mainstream publications lists as well. I think bands will take what they hear on this record and translate that into their own styles. I'm I'm accusing this album of being preemptively influential. The little the the little synth breaks, the little fleeting moments of ambient and the clear Pink Floyd and Donovan influences are honestly incredible on this one, dude. The Stargate kind of spoils us with like a ton of character that with that death metal opening and the subsequent transition into a Pink Floyd inspired solo just to come back and crush us with a fantastic riff that has both brutality and melody. We get a form. We get that formula a lot on this record, and that formula is going to pay off very well for them. I will say it again for the 100th time on this podcast. Blood Incantation put out the best death metal record in 2019 with Hidden History of the Human Race. Great it is album. extremely popular that impossible that in the zeitgeist that is death metal or popular metal as a whole that the vast majority of people who listen to this album will agree that absolute everywhere will be the death metal the best death metal album of 2024 i haven't decided i doubt it'll be at the very very tippy top of my list but it's an extremely fantastic portrayal of how taking risks pays off it is honestly a fucking fantastic record john this is a nine out of 10 for me. The Stargate tablet one, but is my standout, but they're all fantastic. When yeah. you play it front to back, that's the, that's the album. I love that. If you pick a little piece out of it, it doesn't quite work as well as it does when it's alongside it's, uh, it's other tracks here. Dude, so I that's agree, a man. Fuck. Yeah. That's an appropriate score. It's a, it's a fucking great album. Great. Album. Um, I got my shirt. <laughs> Didn't didn't get to pre-order a vinyl no. because I'm not from Europe and they're and they're very expensive to ship out sure. here. But I did get a sick ass shirt. Sometimes that's all you need, man. That's all you need. All right, we got the new Cosmic Putrefaction album, Emerald Fires atop Farewell Mountains. It's another Cosmic Putrefaction album, and it's another banger, dude. Truth be told, I have not had the chance to listen to this one very much yet but what i have heard on the few listens i've given it i've really enjoyed so far sounds very much on par with the last album if not a little more polished i don't really have a score for it yet but it feels like it's in that seven to eight range swirling madness super ordeal is easily my standout (laughs) so far holy shit dude but yeah man it's it's all pretty good so far what are you thinking about this one you enjoying it So everyone in the music world is talking about Blood Incantations album. Everybody in the metal world is talking about Blood Incantations album. Nobody's talking about Cosmic Future Factions album, and it's fucking bugging me. You know, this album is exactly as good as I thought it was going to be, which is uh, enough to say that it's fantastic. He has upped the technicality on this one quite a bit. They've also incorporated some new elements, which I think are great, like the synth work and the symphonic elements on I Should Greet the Inexorable Darkness which are so good here man the tempo changes along with the symphonic elements has really brought a layer of prog into cosmic putrefactions music and you know that i'm all about that tracks like hallways engraved in aether really show off what i love about this band so much massive riffs brutal while still maintaining melody and those double bass grooves are so fucking good The tracks like Swirling Madness, Supernal Ordeal are showing off major technical prowess in some incredible black metal moments. Again, man, prog levels turned up to 10. This track around the four minute and 45 second mark kind of winds down to like some interesting jamming that is surrounded by atmosphere and some incredibly metered drumming alongside alongside some 
really sultry bass work. The synth provides these like ethereal elements. The whole record is filled with little moments like this that really just exemplify well this why this band deserves to be on lists at the end of the year. And they're just probably not going to be, except for very niche publications, probably like ours. Yep. What a fantastic genre blend. And as an overall record, this is a really special one, man. Q might instant FOMO where I thought that I pre-ordered this record. I did not. I'm very bummed. I did not get a final of this. Zoinks. Just major bummer, man. I am so sad, but this is easily a nine out of 10 for me. Swirling madness to Pernal ordeal or Emerald fires atop the farewell mountains are my standout probably because they're both insanely good. Both of them are great. Both of those are my second songs of the week. Fair. Yeah. Swirling Madness is fucking crazy. Love that you love that one too. Yes, sir. All right. We got this new ingurgitating Oblivion album, Ontology of Not. I know you've been dying to talk about this one. So give me your thoughts on it, man. Where do I even start with this Good album, luck. John? Early last year, I discovered this band and fell face first into their record, Vision Wallows and Symphonies of Light. It straight up blew me away. That, coupled with the singles on this album that we got, kind of gave me an idea of what to expect. That's true to a point, but this record is dense and macabre while being everything I like in experimental prog metal these days. At a whopping 72 minutes, this thing is a fucking journey. It's worth noting that the tracks appear as part one through three on streaming, but the vinyl copy and on Bandcamp, those suites of tracks are all pushed together. The 14-minute three-piece opener, Uncreation's whirring loom you ply with crippled fingers is a journey in and of itself. There are droning guitars, some vocals that I don't understand, and then the fucking madness begins. Dissonance, echoes, crushing vocals, distortion, blast beats and grooves, riffs that sound like they'd be impossible to recreate, especially live. I don't know how they're going to play this. Improvisational jazzy just incredibly technical we get some brass instruments more german vocals some of the fastest drumming i've heard this year towards the last five minutes of this song that little smooth and sultry guitar work with the layered vocals some jazzy hi-hat hits along with groovy bass lines just feel like they don't even belong together yet somehow John, they fit so fucking well into this album. None of this should work together, but it all really does, man. The echoed and ceases to be <laughs> as we move into into weave the tapestry of not suite of tracks is so sick, especially as the fucking flute comes in before one of the most crushing distorted riffs on the album comes into play distortion abounds on this track i love how the riffs become more and more unhinged as they progress throughout the first five minutes part two on this one shows off more jazz and improvisational moments the way they can go from tortured and brazen to floating and jazzy is honestly john it is unmatched right now in metal part three introduces fucking tibetan throat singing so just in case you haven't listened to this album yet if anybody's listening here, we aren't even halfway through this record yet. We have already come across brass instruments, blast beats, flute, Tibetan throat singing, crushing <laughs> death metal, chill guitar, and even some softly woven bass lines. None of this should work together. It all works so fucking well on this record. I... I, <laughs> the vocals on this part feel like they've entered into a sixth dimension. I can't even begin to fathom how everything that's happening on this one is even happening. It'll take weeks of digestion, John, for me to get there. I fear I won't be able to fully digest this whole thing in a week or two. I would say it becomes more unhinged as it goes on, but the album started unhinged. It broke a handful of times and it broke all of the rules, but it continued to stay at a level of brutality, fervor, and tenacity you would expect 
from 18th century chaos classical music composers. This is straight up disgusting and beautiful simultaneously. I loved every second of this record, John, and will continue to do so for a long time. You know I don't give many of these, but this is a 10 out of 10 for me. It is quite literally everything I like and music all squished together into an unhinged and chaotic, well, somehow cohesive project. My jaw has been on the floor for about two weeks since this thing dropped. What are your thoughts? That's why you let Brandon go first, people. Dude, that that was a great review, man. My thoughts are not as exciting as yours. I thought it was good. (laughs) <laughs> what if that was my only note? Look, dude, <laughs> I would take it. I would take things it. Things I like about this album, how heavy it is, how technically insane it is, like you mentioned, and how well thought out all of the themes and sequencing are. It's clear so much work went into the structure of this album alone. And like you said, it's it's a little bit different depending on the format, but I appreciate that attention to detail here. Things I don't like about the album are just like, I don't know how to phrase this correctly. I feel like at times it's taking itself very seriously for how dense of an album it is. That That's like more of a matter of personal taste in metal, but it still wore on me a little bit the longer I listen to it. The mix, also pretty rough at times, usually does not matter with metal. It even adds to the charm, I think, of certain subgenres. But with such high levels of technicality going on here, I thought it would sound a little bit more crisp. But maybe that's what they were going for, though, man. Either way, it's a seven minimum for me based on just like the technical mastery alone on this one. To Weave a Tapestry Part 2 is my standout. But goddamn, dude, it got the 10 treatment from you. So we will be talking about this one again at the end of the year. We most definitely will. It just hit the spot. I get that, man. I've heard criticisms of too much distortion or like your criticism, the mixing isn't quite there. I think that it all works for me. And if it doesn't work for you guys, that's fine. too. That is fair. We got one album left to talk about, and I think it's one you and I are both going to agree on. It's this new Sun Gazer one (laughs) against the fall of night. Every single they've released lately has had me begging for a new album. My wish was granted, dude. This project, much different from the last one of theirs we talked about. A lot more experimental. Same same great like musicianship and technicality, but applied in such a new way. I am not familiar enough with the nuance of each musician on this project to know what each guest is adding. But there's nothing on here that does not click for me, dude. Everything feels so smooth. It almost plays like the score of like a high level JRPG or something in the way that it makes for an equally (laughs) compelling active and passive listening experience. I gave it the full on headphones listen for my notes, though, and it was the soundtrack to a lot of things I just did throughout the week as well. And I had just an equally good time listening to it, just throwing it on. But man focusing on it you really get to pick up on some details making a piece of art this complex that can still be enjoyed in a multitude of different ways i think is an accomplishment and i'm not surprised at all that they pulled it off in the way that they do here dude this is in that seven to eight range my standout is cool seven that was like one of the lead singles and i i still cannot get over it man what do you think of this new project from sun gazer You know that I loved it. What I love is that they didn't do another rehash of their last album. They really wanted to add some prog rock to their brand of jazz laden fusion. And they most definitely did just that, especially on tracks like my standout whale fall, where they literally feature prog rocker Pliny or tracks like whiskey and mess. Really bro. It's the whole thing though. There's double bass on here. There's even like some chugs and a jazz record which is wild. I I love jazz. I love prog rock. I love how those two things are blended together here. And I think that again, sun gazer absolutely hit it out of the park. I loved their last album. I really love this one. The electronic elements mixed with the brass, the rock moments and the incredible sequencing on this album deserve listens from everyone. I really enjoyed this one. It's an eight for me. Will Fall is going to be my standout, but they're all good. There's no bad songs on here. There's no skips. Hard to agree, dude. No skips to be seen. Nope. Never are with Sungazer. All right. That does it for us this week. 
Big surprise. We have another big week next week, but I think that's going to be our Yikes. last big one of the year. We saw some fun releases on the horizon, but we're going to be going down to more like three or four on our calendar each week. So we will be able to dive into some of those releases we haven't talked about over the next few weeks. But next week, our hands are pretty full. We got new albums from Anti Up, The Blessed Madonna, the Charlie XCX Brat Remix album, Chat Pile, Glorilla, The Linda Lindas, Real Friends, Rufus Dussault, Touche Amore, and more. Make sure you follow Dear along with God. the link in the show notes to know what we'll be covering on the next episode. You can also find us on Instagram and Reddit. Just search Brandon's Face Pod. Give us a follow. We will see y'all next time. Peace. Peace.